Okay, I have the Miwa JN, also known as the Cabot 20. Uh, it is a dimple lock. Um, there's the key for it. It has 21 pin chambers, and on this one, 15 of them are populated. So different ones have different number of chambers populating de uh, depending on their master key system that they have. And to pick this one, there are um, four different rows that have pins coming in. There's actually six coming from this right side. There's five pins coming from the left side, two upward diagonal from the right, and two upward diagonal from the left. And then I found that I have to use, uh, like most other pickers, or maybe all of them, uh, an extreme amount of tension to pick this open. I've gotten it open once, um, and I'm limited to 30 minutes with this camera so to pick and gut it. So hopefully... <laughs> we can get through. I, it's kind of doubtful. All right, click from bottom left num pin number two and bottom left pin number three. Now some of these pins are very, they have this thin lip on them that is very easy to overset. So you want to be careful about that. Uh, I'm going to go top left pin one, a little bit of movement, not much. Then I'm going to go on the top right and I'm going to look for pin four actually now. One, two, three, I'm going to try to get pin 4 up without messing up the top left pin 3. Okay, so I, I just got it out of the way a little bit with this. Um, that's good enough for now. I'm going to go after the top left ones, hoping I didn't overset pin 3 on the left. So 1, 2, nothing. Mm, 3 is there, but it doesn't feel so good. I just let off tension, so he now dropped down feels better. Um, I think a lot of times I overset them, and then the rest of the pick is just garbage. And the number five on the left gave me a nice click. Check again. One, two, three, four. Okay, so nothing binding on there. Let's check this bottom right pin sometimes. And it doesn't bind this early usually. All right, bottom left, just double check those two pins that are down there. So number two, I've got another click out of him. Now he's got it. And number three, I think one of those has a thin lip. I might have overset one of them. Hopefully it's not a big deal. Let's see. Three, little click from four, and number five should be binding. Click from five, nothing from six. Go back again, one, two, nothing. Okay, so now that bottom right one's probably binding, is my guess. I'm really hoping I didn't overset one of the bottom left, too. All right, click from uh, the bottom right. Now the other one on the bottom right is a zero lift, so as long as I don't touch it, I should be okay. If I touch it, it's game over. Um, a lot of these, uh, actually almost all these key pins are tapered, so you're gonna see that I, I let off tension a lot to drop those back down again during the pick, and then go and reset a bunch of them. So a little click from four, barely. I'm gonna check these top left ones, and then I'm gonna probably drop um, the tapers. And sometimes that drops in an actual pin, usually the bottom right one. So I'll usually let off tension until I see that bottom right one drop. All right, a little click from five on the top left. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to drop. Okay, I saw that one come out, but I'm going to let it go a little bit more. Okay, maybe just that guy. Don't want to drop pins. Two, three, four. Got a little bit of binding back here. Okay, I think that's from the right side binding. So let me see if I can set that that bottom right again. Okay, now the top right. One, one and two will be the last two pins to bind. So if I, last two pins to set. So if I feel those binding, that's a really good thing. That means I'm almost done. Or I overset one of the thin lip ones. All right, five gave me a little bit. And, uh, and, and uh, what that means is if I overset one of the thin lip um, key pins, then it drops, in, it's like a T-pin, it drops into this area and you can keep picking, keep picking, and when you're done, you'll get a false set and you're game over, you can't you can't actually unlock it. Um, two, checking the top right again, three, four, five, six, okay, everything feels good there. Check the bottom left while I have this pick. I'm using these curved ones because they reach around and I'm using the back of the flag to push so, for example, this one I'm pushing the right side, and it kind of reaches around and doesn't touch the left side ones. So, um, that was recommended by multiple people. So, it seems to work. Bottom left. OK. 
a little tiny click from one of them so at least i hope that's not overset bottom right a little click from that one um let's check the left ones while i have this pick top left number one springy two little tiny click three four five okay so i think it's time to ease off a bit get some of those um those tapered springs to uh, tapered pins to reset one bottom right is springy there so something else needs to be set first check the bottom lefts good all right top lefts one two there's a lot of repetition all right something clicked either left or right here when i was touching number three and number five set on the top left okay pulling out a little bit of binding um trying to get my pick out that's generally a good thing. Click on the top left, number two. Okay, now it's starting to feel, okay, feel like some of these uh, pins are actually um, binding at their set position, which is a really good sign. Like pin four on the left, it feels nice and solid when I push on it. The rest, not quite there yet. So that bottom right one I see sticking out again. Let me see if I can set him. I think he went in. Yep. I will try some of these top right ones. One is loose, two is loose, three is loose, four binding. I want to be careful with four because it's one of those thin lip kind of guys. And I don't want to overset my top left number three when I do this. All right. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely just him. So let me go again. One, two, three, pin number four. Okay, set four. Now five should probably bind. No? Okay, interesting. Let's check that top left, make sure I didn't overset number three. One, two, three. No, still good. Four is still nice. Five. Okay, so this top left is starting to feel pretty good. Check that bottom right pin. Sticking out, I don't have a light here to check. Okay, click from him and I felt a little tiny bit of rotation, so that was a good thing. Bottom left, still feels good. Top right, one, two, three. Little click from four, little from five, nothing from six. One, two, let's see if three gives me anything. Open from three. Okay. Bottom left two again, just to make sure. Oh, I have this pick in my hand. Okay, I think that's good. Check these top left ones again. I might have to let off tension again in a second. All right, one feels pretty good. Two feels good. Three good. Four good. Okay, so this is a good sign. Those those top left ones all feel good. So I'm gonna let off a little. Now double check those top left ones because it'll be easy to get them back if uh, they dropped it all. Three, four is usually number five. No, nope, they all feel good. Um, so top right, nothing from one, nothing from two, not really from three. Little click from four, nothing from five, and nothing from six. So my guess is I have to let off tension a little bit more to drop something around here. Usually just enough to get that bottom right, but that bottom right's not even popping up. So I think I'm just down to something on the top right here. One, no. Two, no. Three, no. Four, no. Five, oh, sorry. One and two, no. Three, four, five feels set. Six feels set. I have a feeling it's one of these bottom left two then. Two and... No, they, they both feel like they're missing. Let's check that bottom right one again. That one seems like he was okay, like completely gone. Yeah, he seems okay. I'm gonna let off a little then. I heard something drop on the top right, I think I heard it drop. So let's go after the right side. One, two, three, 
put key from four. Five, six, nothing. Very odd. All right, I'm going to try a lot more tension and pushing harder on these now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I mean, four, five, uh, three, four, five, six seem like they're set. One and two don't bind at all. Not sure where I'm stuck then. really hope something down here is not overset. Remember, something early could have got overset down there. But then I would think that, oh, well, maybe I am turned. But I should still feel pins one and two bind in that case. So it's probably not the case. Top left one feels set. Two feels set. Three feels set. Four. And five. It's good there, so let me let off. Okay, I let off enough to drop that bottom right one. So let's see if that bottom right one will set right now. Come on, slipping off of it. Okay, bottom right one set. All right, let's give this a go. Top right again. One is binding. Okay, so this is a really good sign. Now I'm going to play with one and two a lot, and hopefully I'll get the open. Okay, one, I think I set one, now two. Two can be really hard to set. It binds really tight. And I don't want to mess with my pins on the left, so. Come on. One. I'm trying to get pin two. All right, pin one again. Clicked from one. The click from two. Okay, so I got a click from two. So let me go ahead and see if I'm stuck on the tape around one. I'll let off until hopefully just one drops. There's one. Hopefully I didn't drop two while I did that. And I'll set one again, hoping, hoping that one was in the taper. Come on. Really hard to set these front ones with these, the back of these. That's why I have this red guy. Flat flag for the front here. Nope. Sorry about that. Try the back of this again. There we go. Those front two are, are really tight, but when I get to them, I know that I'm just about there. Um, so we're open. I, it's going to be stuck here. Oh, no. There we go. So it rotates a little. Um, but I, you see, I can't go back to locked position. That's because the um, key pins down there have or the driver pins have shot up down there, so I gotta push them. And then, there we go, so we are open. So I'll go ahead and lock her back up. Show the key again. And we'll go ahead and gut this guy. So we'll turn on the autofocus and zoom out a little. Get this out the way. Um, we're gonna need probably two trays is my guess. So let's do this. All right, let's go down here. And to take this apart, first we got to take off the outer housing. It's like that spring outer housing. So you got to take this piece out. This is probably the piece that takes the most time to get off. Because uh, when one lifts up, the other side binds up and you got to keep lifting about. All right, so that's the first piece off. Then we can take off this and the spring that goes with that. Then there is this C-clip here we'll take off. Pretty easy. There's going to be two washers in here. Okay. Now this inner piece is going to come out. It's held in with these two bars. So this bar goes on the bottom and this bar goes on the top there. 
and then that's going to slide down in these channels and there's a washer at the front there okay um all right so there's the inside piece so we can gut it through you can either take off this back clip and gut it through the front crazy town i'll move this stuff aside or we'll do it a little bit more sane way the, um I've gone ahead and ground little grooves into each of these so I can catch them with the screwdriver. So I'll start with what I have labeled here as number one. So I said one, two, three, four. So number one down here, I'll start with and push it down a little there. So chamber one is empty. I'm going to put my thumb over it and pull the whole thing off like that. Put this here label as number one and I have springs in two and three so I'll put that in two and I'll put this one in three so number two driver and they're these like little hollow caps that go over the springs so there's two and let's see if I can get here's the key pin number two and this is what I was saying by it being a thin lipped key pin see it has a really oh, come on really thin lip on top um, so if you push it too far then you'll overset past that lip and then when you open you'll get stuck on this T area and uh, and coming back out of that it's going to be pretty much impossible so you got to avoid that number three there's the uh, driver and the key pin you see these are the normal key pins they're a little bit fatter on top so not as much issue, but I mean, you could still overset that. It'd be a little bit, it'd be pretty hard actually. All right, so that's uh, slot one, and I'll go to slot two. Sometimes these are not so easy. Okay, I got it to move a little, so now I'm gonna see if I can get it from the top. There we go. All right, so there's a, there's spring number one for number so I'll put that there for spring, well, come on, spring one. This is going to have all chambers populated. So I'll go ahead and pull that out. Number two, uh, a bunch of springs. So these are all the springs there. It doesn't matter which one, they're all the same. So this one is the one that has five pins like that. Go for number one, driver, key pin, two, key pin, driver, three, key pin, driver, four, key pin, driver, and five, driver, and key pin. I'll put that in the wrong chamber. Okay. Number three over here is gonna have all, everything populated as well. Let's see. Sorry if this is in a little bit out of focus area. Come on. All right, I got a little gap up top. I wonder if I can get in there with a the tweezer. Yep, okay. So this one's gonna be fully populated. Let's see if I can grab it yet. Nope. I can open up far enough to get that first spring. Don't want to munge the spring. I haven't munged. Oh, I lost it though. It shot off. So I'll find that after the video. It went off to my right. So I'm going to cover the rest. There's five of those six springs. Thing. It's the first time I've shot off a spring. Of course, on camera. There's number one. This is. They have, I, I wrote on each of these the number, but they've kind of worn off a little. All right, so there's number one. Ooh, almost lost another spring. Don't use the tweezer. Those two are stuck together. Okay. Uh, number two.
three. Sorry, this is a little boring, but it, there's so many pins that it takes a long time, right? Number four, five. That spring is not going to be easy to find over there. And number six. Okay, time for the final. Final one, number four. So I'll put that cover right there. Oops, right there for number four. Has chambers two and five populated. Chamber two and chamber five. I think chamber five was the zero lift. See, he doesn't even want to come out because he's he's rotating in the. Uh, there he goes, rotating in the plug. So there's that. Then I guess we can take out the plug. So there's a clip here that you can take off, a C clip. Or E clip, or I don't know what you want to call this. Come on. Okay, so there's that clip comes off. And this little actuator at the back. We can take that plug out. So you can see this plug has, is that focusing? This plug has 21 chambers. There's 21 chambers on here as well. Nothing special. No, there's no threading or anything like that. They are all tapered down so that those T pin shapes can sit down in each of those. Um, all right, time to look at some pins. See if we can get this on here a little bit nicer. There are still eight minutes left in recording time. So we'll just sort these out a little bit. Three. Come on. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time making it beautiful. Suggest getting uh, gutting everything like this and getting it laid out and taking a photo in case you mix things up It's always good to go back to the photo to fix things Fortunately, I haven't had to but I have on other locks oh, and I put this in the wrong area. All right, there we go Everything sorted so I'll look at these ones first. There's the uh, pins for the one side, the left side. And here are the pins for the right side. So that is the Miwa JN. Now I'm gonna spend a few minutes putting it back together. It's not too hard. And I'll probably spend a lot more time looking for that spring that shot off to the right. Anyways, that's it. Thanks.